So I also want to say, see the exhibit if you haven't seen the exhibit. I, um, I would not say that I'm jaded, but I would say that I was surprised. But who laughed? Who laughed? <laughs> Josh. I was surprised by this exhibit. Um, and a couple things I want to say about that is, uh, what I know is that, um, is that HIV and AIDS is not exclusive to the community of gay men, but, but what I saw in my reactions had a lot to do with, with who I am as a gay man. So, so that's here, and it was all about just what I was, where I was in the moment. So I have three pieces to share with you. Um, there was a piece that Rock didn't show that was amazing. It was a, um, a wooden crate filled with sand, uh, and, and you were invited. Uh, um, in the exhibit, you're invited to write the names of people in the sand that, that either you've lost to AIDS or, or in any other way. So this is uh, in reaction to that. In sand, inscribe the name of your fear. Feel your fingertips tingle in each of the letters. Dig your hands deeply into the grains till you are up to your elbows in your own fear. These are your hands, your elbows. This is your fear. Raise clenched fists of sand to your mouth. Choke on the, gr on the dry futility of fear. Open your hands and look up. Feel your fear sift away and rain over the landscape. In sand, inscribe the name of your strength. Thank you. I also thought a lot about community. Um, yeah. They want us so badly the politicians and their pundits, the preachers and their flocks, the suburbanites and their yoga classes, the senior citizens and their golf carts. They want us so badly to be a community. Stooping, peering, tapping on the aquarium glass, they see us. They know what we should do about sex and love and marriage and children, about art and music and fashion and food and our lives. They vote for our lives and against our lives. We are not a community. We are not the same. We are not check boxes on ballots. We are more than the front page on Gay Pride Weekend. We are gay and lesbian and bisexual and transgender and questioning and intersex and genderqueer and all of those things and none of those things. Mm -hmm. We are black and Hispanic and Asian and Ukrainian and Muslim and Christian and atheist. We like Coke and Pepsi. <laughs> we like the mountains and the beach. We read Us Weekly and War and Peace and the Bible. We are vegetarian and pescatarian and omnivorean. We are morbidly obese and we have eating disorders. We smoke cigars, we smoke pop, and we smoke the rear tires on muscle cars. <laughs> we are funny and not at all funny. We wear suits and dresses and jeans and culottes. Okay, we don't really wear culottes because no one wears culottes, which is exactly my point. We are not a community. We do not hear you tapping on the glass. We are not in the aquarium. We are legion. We are in your offices and at your dinner tables and in the DNA you pass on to your children. We are you. I am you and you are me. We are only ever the community we make, the community that we decide to love. This is probably the hardest piece I've ever written in my poetic life. Thank God the AIDS crisis is over. Thank God it's a problem of the 80s, like parachute pants, spiked hair, and cocaine addiction. I am at a museum. I'm at an exhibit about AIDS. I'm surrounded by art about dead people. Art by dead people. This is not my story. I'm not affected by AIDS. Affected. As if AIDS was a storm over some other part of the city. A hungry lion bursting from the jungle onto an unsuspecting African village. A sinkhole that swallowed an entire family while everyone else was at the county fair. As if AIDS was the speed bump that America encountered on the best road trip ever. As if AIDS isn't a metaphor at all, but a virus. A virus that eviscerates immunity. A virus that oozes and bleeds and drips inelegantly from orifices and sores. A virus that strikes at the core of our squeamish fear of sex. A virus that punishes men for sex with other men. Punishes men for fucking. This is not my story. A patriarchy fears nothing so much as emasculation. 
fears nothing so much as a man submitting to be penetrated like a woman. In answer to this aberration of nature, President Reagan and our leaders and our people went mute, as if thousands of disease-riddled bodies were the speed bumps for which America never even slowed down. And instead of lifting up the sick, the righteous called fire down onto the abomination of homosexuality and proclaimed AIDS just punishment from the God who had already given us his sexual preferences when he gave us the immaculate conception. Art about AIDS is not immaculate. It is ugly and uncomfortable. There are framed fluids, a leather shroud of sweat, paintings like open sores and the stained underwear of a man who wasted away to his death decades ago. Thank God the AIDS crisis is over. This is not my story. I'm not affected by AIDS. I take a blue pill every morning, a gauzy shield against HIV infection. I take a blue pill every morning and the secret I'm not supposed to tell you is that sometimes I play roulette with hot, messy, risky sex instead of the immaculate interaction. Mm. I take a blue pill every morning hoping I continue to pull back blanks. Mm. I take a blue pill every morning and I don't always think about AIDS, but sometimes when I walk through a graveyard gallery of men who look like me, I remember how at 24, I learned that being true to myself meant that I might die for it. Yeah. I take a blue pill every morning because the drug companies and the politicians are on our side now. And they want you to know that sex should be safe. And if you can imagine, you are at risk, even if you're not gay.